All right, welcome to GrowCoach.com. Ken Salville here today talking about weeds. And I'm just out in the back of a, of a industrial area where we're just looking at weeds. This happens to be a lot of weeds here, so it's a good place to, to start. Now, uh, there's a lot of weeds around and it's good to kind of know the differences between them so you know how to treat them, to know what kind of, uh, how much work it's gonna be to get rid of them, if you need to get rid of them, or if you can just simply weed whack them down with the, with the weed eater, which, which is an acceptable way of doing it because you can just chop the flowers off and away you go. But uh, some of these weeds we're gonna look at today are pretty, some pretty durable ones. So I just wanted to show you this one I spotted. It's growing out of this little pile of soil here. And uh, this little guy, this is kind of a pretty weed, but it's really quite a pretty obnoxious weed, really. <laughs> it's kind of a bad one. This is the, uh, this is called Ancusa. And Ancusa is a, uh, I think they call it bug loss. I'm not really 100% sure common names, but, but it's a really in aggressive, invasive uh, weed. I'm pretty sure it's even classified as a noxious weed. So it's pretty, pretty difficult to plant to get rid of. It's fully perennial. And like I, this looks like soft soil too, so I'm gonna see if I can just pull him out and we can see what kind of root system he has. Cause this one should be a full out perennial. And it certainly looks like a perennial. It's got really big, long stringy roots. And these things will grow like crazy. Each plant produces just thousands and thousands of weed seeds and they need absolutely no water to grow. So it's a really bad one. It's kind of pretty in a way. The Ancusa family actually has uh, several ornamental uh, varieties in its, in its uh, family group, but um, this is just the bad one. It grows all through, mostly in dry climates, but it seems to be spreading everywhere. So good to be aware of it. And if you can pull it out, pull it, you know, you just kill it whatever way you can. Uh, I'm just gonna show you these little guys, some little mustard weeds here. They're pretty common and they'll be blooming some bright yellow flowers here fairly soon. There's a bunch of different types of mustards and uh, they're kind of, uh, they're super easy. They're just an annual, so similar roots, but these ones will definitely die. So it's important to know your weeds when it comes to annuals, perennials, and biennials. So annuals, they just die every year. They come back from seed every year. And that's good to know if you're trying to get rid of weeds. They're biennials, really good information. They grow one year and then they, the second year they shoot up and they flower and go to seed. And perennials, like this Ancusa is a perennial, so it just comes back once it starts. It just lives for years and years and years and continues to grow. So it's good to know that too. If I leave it there, it's just gonna, it's not gonna just die out. It's gonna keep on growing. So the mustard weed is an annual. It just comes really quick and dies off. One of this is a really a funny little plant that a lot of people uh, might see around quite commonly. It's a little weed called, uh, this is actually is uh, buckwheat. And buckwheat is a, is a plant grown for its seeds and, and obviously for buckwheat. <laughs> but it's a real aggressive little weed and it grows everywhere now. So it's uh, spread all over the country and uh, it's just super easy to pull. It's an annual, it dies every year, but it comes back from seed every year. So really important to know how it, how it comes back every year so you know how to treat it. With this one, if you just never let it go to seed, you'd never have any seeds to perpetuate it. So that just makes sense. Now we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna show you these little weeds here and then we're gonna move into the bigger ones. You see little guys here and here's a little guy in here. See this? little seedlings and then here's a little bit older one. Here's a bigger one. So these are knapweeds. So knapweed is one of these really bad weeds that uh, spreads like crazy. Each plant produces a huge amount of seeds. So I'm trying to get the best light on this. I'm gonna show you some bigger ones. But uh, they produce so many seeds per plant and they need absolutely zero water to grow, it seems like. And they proliferate all over British Columbia. Uh, I heard at one time 50,000 acres a year was being covered with uh, knapweed. So it's a tough one and I know they have introduced a uh, a little bug, a little beetle to help to consume these and they eat the little flower heads off. But even if you chop this one off, at least you're going to get rid of the, uh, you're going to get rid of the seed heads. So we're going to continue on here with these weeds and, and these are bigger nap weeds here. You can see these guys are really happy and they're growing like mad. And this is a time to, to, to weed eat them off. Uh, Cause even if you do just snip the plant off, 
you know, that's where all the seeds are going to come from. This is where the flowers will be, not for another maybe four or five weeks, but at least if you cut it off, there's no way that's going to produce any seed this year. The plant's still alive, but you just have to make sure you get all those seed stems, the flowering stems off of it. And even if you can't get rid of the plant, at least you prevented it from seeding. So that's, that's really helpful. I want to show you these, uh, these, uh, these thistles. This is a really cool looking thistle. And it's, unfortunately, it was brought in as an ornamental thistle. And now it's spreading everywhere and it's becoming quite a, quite a pest. And it's a biennial. So remember what I was saying, biennials, annuals, or perennials. Biennials, these guys grew to about the size of a uh, small dinner plate last year, only about maybe about two inches, three inches high. So that was their first year. The second year, now they're starting to really, really kick in and grow. So year two, they're just going to take off, grow like mad, grow to full size. These things grow about eight feet high. They have huge thistle heads on them, and then they're going to scatter their seeds everywhere. So really important that we get rid of this one. This is a really bad invasive species. And I'll, I will try to get the name for you. Uh, I, I know I used to, I used to know this one years ago, but anyway, we'll get the name for you, get it on, this, on the screen, hopefully, so that we can uh, uh, just identify it. But regardless, it's a giant silver leaf thistle, and this thing will get about eight feet high this year. But interestingly enough, it will just die off at the end of this season. So when it's done, it just, it's dead. But the seedlings will start again, and they'll start in the fall, and they'll grow to be about yay big again, and then the next year they'll go again. So it takes two seasons, they're biennials, and because I know that, I know I can get them when they're little, I can get the plants out when they're little and they're easy to kill, I can just chop them off, I don't have to worry about them coming back from their roots. So it's just a really cool plant. And I can see these ones are filled with little uh, weevil insects that are on them and a couple wasps here and there. But I can see weevils on the end of this one. And that particular weevil, not sure which one it is, but it's a little weevil. And weevils have a snout and they affect all kinds of different uh, plants. And on this one, I'm not so sure if they just haven't found a good place to hide right now. But they sure seem to be loving the sunlight, so they're right up on the tips of the shoots getting the heat. All right, we're gonna see if we can just move around to the back here and I'm gonna show you a couple other weeds. This one here, this is a real vicious little weed. You can see the beautiful blooms on it. And that is your vetch, crown vetch. And it's, it's a really tough weed, this one. Grows like crazy, twines around things, really difficult to kill, like with or without chemicals, it's a toughie. And this one should be really pulled out. And you can see if we can pull it out of the ground, try to find the base. So when you're doing pulling out weeds, you got to get right to the base of the plant, right where they come out of the ground. And just pull them right as close as you can to the ground. And if you can almost reach into the ground and grab their roots, that's even better. And so I managed to pull it out and I just broke the roots off. So. That means he's going to come back. This is a perennial weed. Perennials come back. They're going to come back every year. So you can't just kill it. You can, but by getting rid of this before, you see it's still in bloom, before it's gone to seed, at least I'm getting rid of all the seeds that would scatter everywhere. So kind of pretty, but kind of aggressive. It's a tough one, doesn't need water to grow, just grows anywhere. And so crown vetch, that's a tough one. All right, now I'm gonna show you some other little uh, weeds here. There's some grass here, but it's not particularly a weedy grass, so I'm not gonna talk about that one. But uh, I do have some here that I wanted to show you. Just watch your step there. Oops, here's some little potentillas. This is a uh, potentilla gracilis or gracilimus. It's gracilis, I think it is. And uh, it's just about to bloom. So it, if you look at it, it looks a lot like the potentillas that you have in your yard, uh, but they're just bigger leaves. And this one is a perennial, so it, it's got hardy roots. It lived through winter, no problem, and it shoots up every year, and it's just budding now. And they just spread like crazy uh, all over the place. They get little yellow flowers on them, just like the regular potentillas. It is a potentilla just happens to be one of the weedy forms. So this particular one, the common name is, uh, I think it's uh, sinkfoil is a common name for it, but 
they're really tough. They grow everywhere, all over British Columbia. And there's about actually about three different types that are pretty common. But most of them are classified as weeds. So if you see them blooming, you go, oh, that's kind of pretty. Just don't let them go to seed because they seed everywhere. So really important with that one. Okay, uh, we're gonna just see if we can find uh, another little uh, bunch of grass over here that I, it's my favorite one to hate. Oh, here it is. So, so easy to pull this one. It's not a perennial. So you see when I pull that out of the ground, it's just sitting on the surface. There's hardly anything to this guy. Super easy to pull, but look at the seeds on that thing. This is spear grass, right? This is a spear grass that gets in your dog's hair. And I've even heard of people say that the spear grass will get up your dog's nose. And it's a tough one. It's got really big nodes on the stems. But uh, this thing's a strictly an annual. So what it does is it grows from seed every year. So what I have to do is I gotta pick it. Like in this stage, this is still actually just flowering. It's still in its flowering stage, but it's not gonna be too long. And it's gonna, these are gonna turn, they're gonna dry out and turn brown. And as soon as they're dry, they're ready to be a spear grass. It'll actually burrow into things. They're, that's how they spread in the wild is by getting into animal's fur. And they can, and as the animal moves, it works its way in and it lodges in the fur. And then the animal will track it for miles and miles and miles and eventually it'll drop out and start to grow there and every single seed will grow. They seem to be all just self-pollinating and uh, pretty, pretty hard to get rid of. So there's two types of common uh, spear grass that I know of. Um, this is the taller version. I believe the shorter one is, uh, yeah, this is the uh, Bromus is the botanical name. Bromus, this is uh, Arvensis, Bromus Arvensis. And the shorter one, I think, is Squarosa. It's a shorter one, but they're both Bromus. And I, you, sometimes you'll see me talking about Bromus in, in, in other videos where I'm talking about it being a bad weed. And it spreads by seed. So the trick is, is don't let it go to seed. So get out there now, and this is right about mid-May or so, mid to end of May, and you gotta get it cut. Even if you weed whack it at this stage, these are just flowers right now, but they're right getting close to being on the verge of turning into seeds. So the ideal thing is to get rid of them and even weed whack them earlier or hoe them out because the roots are not very deep. They're super easy to pull. But one of my most hated weeds so remember that a weed is just a plant growing where it's not wanted. So that means that, you know, a poplar tree could be a weed if it's growing all over your yard and shooting up in your lawn, it could be. Uh, but, um, you know, anything can be a weed if it's a plant growing where it's not wanted. So if I wanted a bunch of grass growing out back, then maybe it wouldn't be a weed, you know? So it's just one of those things. It's only a weed to you if it's, if it's you know, affecting your life in a negative way. Uh, noxious weeds are different, and noxious weeds, like I'm pretty sure that the uh, knapweed is considered a noxious weed. And that just means that cattle won't be able to eat them. Any animals that eat them will generally become sick and they will not uh, survive well. So they're considered to be a non-edible sort of poisonous plant, and it doesn't have any other uh, uh, species of, of insects or anything that are attacking them. So there's a category, noxious weeds, and you can read about it and find out what, what that means. And then in your area, it's really about learning what weeds are bad in your area. And if you can stay up to date uh, by checking their local uh, agricultural websites, the government websites are really great at telling us, you know, what are the latest weeds and which are the ones that are going to be the problem and uh, which new ones are coming into the community. So you'll hear a lot of talk about ragweed and uh, it's just actually there's a myriad, <laughs> there's so many different weeds, it's just unbelievable. Uh, luckily out here in the Okanagan we don't have the giant hogweed which is a real horrible weed that grows down in coastal areas and it's just a toughie. So anyway, that's it. That's it on weeds today. I could go on, on, on and on about weeds, but the thing you can learn today is you need to know, is it an annual, a perennial, or a biennial? And you'll know, it'll give you a better idea of how to control that plant for the long term. So that's it for today. Thanks again for tuning in to growercoach.com.